secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. So you, mortal, I have made a signal for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give the warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their inequity, but their blood I will require of your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their inequity, but you will have saved your life. Now, you mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back. Turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together a portion of Psalm 119 in your bulletin. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. 
Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away your approach to thy dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, preserve my life. Reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in the reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and facetiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Father, I asked God for a bike, and it didn't come. The priest explained that God doesn't really work that way. The following week, the little boy comes back to the priest and proudly explains, Father, I got a bike. Really, said the priest, how can I help? The little boy answered, well, praying to God for the bike didn't work. So I stole one. <laughs> and now I'm here to ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness is a really big thing for Christians. It is incredibly important that we're not only forgiven by God, but that we are forgiven by others when we make mistakes, or that we forgive them when they make mistakes, especially ones that impact us negatively in some way. I call them mistakes, but when we're in the process of offending or hurting another person, in some way, we typically do not feel like we're in the wrong at all. Sometimes, and I would say that this is on rare occasions, we go about the process of ruining somebody else's day while thinking to ourselves, I know this is the wrong thing to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. Those events are actually easier to undo because we've already prepared ourselves for the eventuality that we're probably going to have to apologize. We may find ourselves second-guessing what we said, literally, while we're saying it, or very shortly thereafter. But sometimes we may make a comment that offends someone without even realizing it. Or, we may be arguing in favor of a particular belief or position that we hold that the other person simply doesn't share. Reconciling is never easy. In fact, admitting we were wrong, even if we may not actually fully believe we were, is really hard. I was wrong once. I thought I made a mistake, but I didn't. But we do it because we know deep down that it will help to heal the other person and diffuse the situation. And well, it's just the Christian thing to do. These concepts may not be very exciting and they may even make us feel a little uncomfortable. Perhaps we have a feud that is ongoing with another person, and that is never easy. This is addressed today in both the second reading from Paul and the gospel message from Matthew. We're getting a double whammy of Christian morals and ethics today. Not every seminarian's favorite subject, I can assure you. So what should we do? We're called to reconcile with those with whom we may have an issue. These things just hang over us like a dark storm cloud, causing us to worry and feel bad. But if we draw upon Christ's love for us, we can muster up the courage to say, I'm sorry. That was my fault. This is really what a Christian should do. One of the options for the offertory sentence, I usually say, walk in love as Christ loved us, he gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. I, probably because it was the first one that I committed to memory, and that seems like a very long time ago, but I've never really changed it. But the one from Matthew 5, 23 and 24 says this, and you've probably heard it. If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, 
Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. When I was a, what was I? I wasn't a deacon yet. I was a seminarian. I did my internship in upstate New York and I was hanging out at the local Episcopal church and the priest there said, watch out for this one. He said, if I said that, half the congregation would not come up for communion. It's a bit of an issue. Jesus felt very strongly that we should live together in unity and harmony with one another. In order to make this work, there are specific things we should not do. Do not turn away in hatred. Do not harbor resentment. Do not seek revenge. And refrain from gossip. That's a big one. And remember that we are called to forgive a person as many times as it takes. Paul even reminds us today of the Ten Commandments as he sums up many of the obligations of the Christian life. Paul is telling us that ethical behavior is very important for a person who professes the Christian faith. But who decides what this behavior is? Society certainly has its morals and mores, but to be fair, certain behaviors that only a short time ago were thought to be unacceptable are now being lauded by the vocal minority. At the heart and center of the forgiveness we are called to bestow upon others, and at the very core of the ethical principles we must abide by as Christians, Paul tells us right in the center is love. Love for each other is the most powerful tool that we have in our spiritual toolbox. Have you ever noticed when you're having an argument or a disagreement with someone, and it could be your significant other, or it could be a parent, it could be a child, it could be a friend. Have you ever noticed that you get that awful feeling that just stays with you and it just won't let you rest and it won't go away. These uncomfortable situations ferment and fester the longer we leave them unresolved. When we do apologize, it's not uncommon for the other person to say, no, it's my fault, and take blame. One has to be careful not to get into another argument over trying to be the person of fault. It may sound odd, but it's often true. And once we've cleared the air of whatever may have come between us, it can be a wonderfully liberating experience. Admittedly, today's gospel is not going to be as familiar as the parable of the prodigal son or some of the other parables like the road to a day of season or uh, the teaching of the Lord's Prayer by, the, by Jesus. We know those. Those are stuck in our memory banks. But subjects that fall under the category of Christian morals and ethics can help guide us towards a more fruitful and rewarding life while setting an example for others to follow. Within the context of Christian ethics can be found the subcategories of such as philosophy, science, politics, economics, social issues, liberation theology, and the use of resources, environmental issues, and much, much more. So how do we process all this information should we be inclined to do that? We're fortunate that some of the greatest minds within Christianity have spent their lifetimes attempting to interpret these issues, and we can refer to them. These people have already done the hard work, the heavy lifting. Some of them should be familiar to you. Augustine, 
Thomas Aquinas, Pope John Paul II, the current Pope, and several of our own Archbishops of Canterbury, Roland Williams, authors such as C.S. Lewis, and many others. So how did we get here? Are we living in incredibly tumultuous times, or are we just more informed thanks to social media and a 24-hour news cycle? Perhaps it's a little bit of all of this. Either way, you may find yourself scratching your head while watching the news and wondering, how did we get ourselves into this mess? Do not become despondent. The Bible can be a great help and comfort, as can some of the writings of the highly regarded ethicists that have lived since Jesus walked the earth, and I've already named some of them. So if you're struggling with a particular issue, you may find answers by reading relevant books. And even if you find yourself not agreeing with the author, that's okay. At the very least, you could find a starting point from which you can draw your own conclusions. And when in doubt, read Scripture, especially an annotated Bible that provides interpretations as well as the chapters and verses that answer specific questions. I have one of those. I use it a lot. The Bible is much more than just a list of do's and don'ts. It gives us detailed instructions on how we should live. For Christians and those who believe in the Bible, it contains all that we need to know about how to live a Christian life. Today's Gospel and Second Reading are perfect examples of this. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God made, of one made with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the heart of the Virgin Mary and then became a man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was murdered. And on the third day, he rose again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly and in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. We pray thanksgiving for the support for the work of our ministry task forces, for outreach ministry, for stewardship, for the prospects of new growth, for the spiritual gifts of hospitality, giving, and faith. We pray for all the blessings in our own lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We bid your prayers for the patriarchs of the Universal Church. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, who is to have surgery, and for our assistant and for Matthew, our assistant bishop, for the standing committee and for the clergy of the Diocese of Milwaukee, for our celebrant Father Nigel and for Karen Deacon, and all bishops and our ministers. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Ireland. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Christopher's River Hills. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Tony Metzel. We pray for our companion diocese, the Diocese of Noah. We pray for our covenant pair of St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church, the clergy and the parishioners. We pray for those who are unemployed, they may find jobs. We pray for those in the armed forces, especially those of great danger, that they may find peace and be brought home safely and sanely. We pray for those in the Ukraine and other places of strife. We remember those who died and suffered on 9-11. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them strength and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Mary, Jeanette, Barbara, Ruth, Lee, Craig, June, Daisy, Rita, Marianne, and Manfred. Others who may wish to pray for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy, all of thine, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we sh may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray for Grace, Perlina, Dorothy, Paul, Paulette, Jerry, Skip, Deacon Wally, Marshall, Laura. Muriel, Albert, Rosemary, Edward, Richard, Alfie, Virginia, Esther, Mary, and Zachary, and those who now remain either silently or alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God and Father of all, whose Son commanded us to love our enemies, lead them and us from prejudice to truth, deliver them and us from hatred, cruelty, and revenge, and in your good time enable us to stand reconciled before you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. <coughs> Any announcements, Steve? I don't have any. David? Next Sunday is the Episcopal Organist's Concert. Organists from seven Milwaukee Episcopal parishes are going to perform at All Saints Cathedral, as you've seen on our posters. It's at 2.30. And I look forward to seeing many of you there. Uh, there's parking available a block, a short block north of the cathedral in the Lincoln School lot. We welcome to park there. Next Sunday, Joe Dominic will be our guest organist. And I'll see you in the afternoon. And next Sunday, we are celebrating Holy Cross. It's September 14th, but uh, we're transferring it to the Sunday, so it'll be a red day. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
when the weather changes and my allergies aren't driving me nuts, I will begin singing at least the surf and chord, which is the Lord be with you, and you respond and also with you. But we're not going to do it today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks for your grace. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory be you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth are by own call. By your will, they were created after their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rules of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you. Joining with the heavenly courts, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> Now, as our Savior. 
Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Lord, let's be pleased. Hallelujah.
strikes me that you guys might have thought I was being serious in the sermon when I said there was only one once. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.